Okay, in today's video, we're going to be going over another problem involving the Bohr model. In this video, we're going to be calculating the wavelength absorbed for a specific transition. Before we do that, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos right down there in the bottom right-hand corner. Click on that red button. Subscribe to Step by Step Science. Thank you very much. And this is the problem we're going to be working on today. We have the hydrogen energy level diagram, and we're going to determine the wavelength of light that a hydrogen um, atom would have to absorb to move from the ground state to N3. So that's the second excited state. The ground state is N1, then we have N2, and we have N3. The ground state being minus 13 electron volts, N3 being 1.51 electron volts. So the first thing we have to do is just simply find the difference between those two energy levels. The difference in the energy level would be 13.6 minus 1.51, and that means that transition is 12.09 electron volts. Now really these problems, once we've figured that out, really this just becomes a conversion where we convert from electron volts to joules to meters to nanometers to frequency and all that kind of stuff and energy so what we're going to do is we're just going to convert now and find out what wavelength of light corresponds to 12.09 electron volts and we're first i'd like to first uh convert this to joules now you can do this all in one step in the last video i kind of went through it more a little bit more step by step this time we're going to combine a couple steps but first of all, I want to convert 12.09 electron volts into joules. And we know one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And that gives us that 12.09 electron volts, which is one unit of energy, one form of one of the units for energy, joules being a different unit for energy, corresponds to 1.93 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. Okay, now we're going to use our equations for energy, which is energy is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency, and the speed of light is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. Now in this video, as I said, I'm going to combine the steps, and I'm going to convert, rearrange this equation. And this is a common thing that's done, rearrange this equation to solve for the frequency. That means that the frequency is equal to the speed of light, C being the speed of light, divided by the wavelength. And then I can substitute that into this equation. So you'll often see this equation combined by this equation by first doing this. And then you get that the energy is equal to hc divided by the wavelength. That's Planck's constant divided by the speed of light. Excuse me, Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength. And I remember this equation looks like this because I remember these two constants, Planck constant and the speed of light, are on the top of this equation. And then the wavelength is on the bottom. But we actually want to solve for the wavelength. We're not solving for the energy we actually have or been given the energy. So I'm just going to rearrange this by solving this equation for the wavelength. And that means that the wavelength is then equal to uh, Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the energy. And the energy has to be in joules. We can't put this energy in 12.09 electron volts into this equation based on the units that this these two values have, Planck's constant and the speed of light, we first have to convert to joules. We have to put the joules in here, not the electron volts. And after that, it's simply just plug the values in. The wavelength is going to be equal to Planck's constant, which is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds, which is then multiplied by the speed of light, 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. We divide that by the energy we got, and that's 1.93 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. And that comes out to be 1.03 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. And I'm going to convert that into nanometers, and that's 103 nanometers. When we talk about light, especially in like the visible spectrum, um, we, which this isn't really in the visible spectrum, but we, we usually convert to nanometers. So when you do, I just want to point out, when you do this, you don't get 103, you get 1.03 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, which then corresponds to 103 nanometers, because in one meter there's 1.0 times 10 to the 9 
nanometers or a billion. So I just took my 1.03 times 10 to the minus 7 and multiplied it times 1 times 10 to the 9th. And you get that that is 103 nanometers. Okay, so there you go. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, once again, please don't forget, subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.